that. All right, I'm going to share a screen with you now. And when it comes up, just tell me if you can see it or not. So um, I've shared a screen with you now. Tell me, uh, just unmute yourselves when you can see it so that I know that you can see. It should say introduction to music fundamentals, a practice assessment. Yes, it should, sir. Good. All right, and I'm going right to the bottom now to where the piano keyboard is. Okay, can you see the piano keyboard? Yes. All right. Now, the most important thing about tones and semitones is knowing how far you need to go for a semitone and how far you need to go for a tone. So let us say, for example, that you have been asked in the question to write a note, a semitone higher. That means up, all right, for each of the notes. Let's say you've been asked to write a semitone higher than F. All right. So can you see the F that I'm circling now with my cursor? Yes. All right. Now, a semitone is always when you are just jumping one, one step, okay? And in a piano keyboard, the steps are alternately black and white, except between E and F and B and C. Okay, so if we look at this F, for example, one step up from F is going to this note over here this black note over here, okay? So if we're going to go up from F one step, we're going to land on the black note here. And you can see that the black note is either F sharp or G flat, okay? So if we're looking at it from the G side, it's G flat. If we're looking at it from the F side, it's F sharp. You all with me? Yes, sir. When you are writing semitones, you can write either of these. You can write G flat or F sharp. It doesn't matter. Either of those are going to be correct. So a semitone up from F is F sharp or G flat. All right. Now, if we said go up a semitone from the note B, Locate B, there's B, and it could be any B. You could look at any B on this keyboard. There's another B, okay? And here's another B here. You can look at any of those Bs. It doesn't matter which one you're going to look at, okay? One semitone up from B means that we're just gonna take one step. Now there's no black note here, so we can't go there. We just go to the next one that's available. And the next one that's available is C. So a semitone up from B is C, okay? Let's say also been asked to write a semitone up from the note A sharp. So we look for A sharp, there is A sharp. We need to take one step up. One step up is to the B. So our answer is going to be B. Okay. Now let's say we want to work with a tone now. We've been working with semitones. Now we want to work with tones. So with tones, we are doing two steps. And if, if the tone is down a tone, we're going to go two steps down. If the tone is up, we're going to go two steps up. So let's work with down a tone. Okay, let's imagine that the question asks, go down one tone from the given note. And let's say that the given note is A. So you can choose any A on the keyboard there. Okay. And now we are going to count two down. So one goes there, two goes to the G. We first go 
has every available node that we can go to. So A goes down, the closest one from A is A flat or G sharp, and then another one down to G. You with me? Yeah. So tone down from A is G. Now here's an important thing that you need to remember with tones. This is not for semitones, only for tones. When you are working with tones, you have to go up or down to the next letter name. So if you are working with an A, your answer must be G because it's the next letter. Okay, so let's say your given uh, note was B flat. There's B flat. And the question asks for a tone down, one tone down. So we've got to take two steps. We start on the B flat. Our closest note is A, that's step one. The next closest note is over here. Okay, now we've got a problem here because the answer could be G sharp or A flat. And our original note was B. Our rule for tones is that it needs to be the next letter down. So the next letter down from B is A. So our answer must be A flat, not G sharp. Are you with me on that? No. Please repeat that, sir. Repeat, okay. Yes. Remember, only for tones, that's when we're working with two steps. So tones, it must be the next letter. And if you're going up a tone, it must be the next letter up. If it's down a tone, it must be the next letter down. So remember the music alphabet is A, B, C, D, E, F, G. If you are given the note A and you have to go up a tone, yes, A, your answer has to be the next letter name. So it's gonna be B flat or B or B sharp. Let's have a look. Here's A, we go one up, two up. It's just B, so we're good, okay? If we're going to go down a tone from A, there's one step, there's the second, it goes to G. It's quite easy when you're working with the white notes, it's going to work itself out. But when you're working with a black note, it's more complicated because it can have two names, like this one. It can be B flat or A sharp. Let's put this one, A flat and G sharp over here. Okay, now let's say we have to go up a tone from A flat. Let's say you've been given A flat. So we find A flat, here it is on the keyboard. We step one up, two up, okay? Now we have to ask ourselves, which is the correct answer? A sharp or B flat? And we remember our rule, we need to go one letter name up. So we started with the letter A. So what's the next letter after A? B. B, yes. So our answer must be the, the one with the B. So it must be B flat. B flat, okay. Okay, not A sharp. Okay. okay, if we're going down, it's the opposite. So here is the A flat. Now we're going to go step down to G, that's a one. Step down to G flat or F sharp, that's the second step. Now we need to work out, is our answer F sharp or G flat? Our starting note was A, so one note before A is G. So the answer must be G flat, not F sharp. F sharp is two, two notes down. So it must be the G flat. Okay? Okay. Yes, sir. 
All right. We'll come back to uh, we'll come back to this again just now when we look at the answers. All right, because uh, we'll look at at these things, uh, the answers over here that I've put here, and you'll see how it works. All right. It's quite an important thing to know because we're going to be working with tones and semitones a lot uh, from next week. So to know about tones and semitones is quite important and the distinction between them. Also very important is for us to begin to get in our ear the sound difference between a semitone and a tone. So if we start out la, a semitone up is la, it's very close. La, la, but a tone is a bigger sound. La, la. So the semitone is the smallest movement. The tone is a bigger movement. Okay, so the, the important thing for us is to get used to how it sounds and then also how it looks. All right, let's have a look now at the answers for, for the test. So question one is about note values. And this, I think, is fairly straightforward for you. You're just going to have to identify how long each note is and what it is called. All right, so your test will look almost exactly the same as this. It will just have different note values here, okay? So our first note over here, we can see is the open uh, note with a stem. And we know that that one is called a minimum and it's worth two. Now, the important thing about this is it's actually asking two things. It's asking, what is the technical name of the note and how long is the note? So you must include both to get it right. Do you see that there are one, two, three, four, five examples, but there are 10 marks. That's two marks for each of these. So you'll get one mark for minimum and one mark for two beats. You with me? Yes, sir. Don't forget to do both answers because then you won't get both marks. Okay. Great. Second one here. If we took the dot away from there, it would be a quaver. But because of the dot, it's a dotted quaver. How much is a, a quaver on its own worth without the dot? It's half. A half. And the dot, what does the dot do? It added the half. It adds a half. All right. So a dotted quaver is a half plus a quarter. And that equals altogether three quarters. Three quarters. Dotted quaver is three quarters of a beat. Then we've got over here, crotchet, and we know that the crotchet's the easiest one. That's what we started with. It's one beat. Over here, we've got a dotted semibrief. Try not to get confused between semibrief and semiquaver. What is a semiquaver? Who can tell me how much a semiquaver is worth? Semiquaver is half. Is how much? Semiquaver is a quarter. A quarter, yes. Okay. And a, uh, a semi brief, how much is a semi brief worth? Four bits. Four. So there's a big difference between the two, isn't there? So remember that the bigger one is the semi brief. And sorry, this should actually read here six beats, not four. That should be six beats. Okay. Hmm. Why is this one six beats? Can you tell me? It's got a dot. It's got a dot, which is half Yeah. So if we took the dot away, it would be four. The dot tells us we need to add half, and half of four is two. So four plus two is six. All right, then we've got, what's this note over here? It's a quaver, is half a beat. With that? Yes. Yes, sir. All right. Now the next question, it says, write the correct number of beats that the rests below represent. So we just need to say how many beats they are worth. 
Yeah, this one is uh, a ZC rest over here. ZC rest is worth one. When we put a dot with the rest, it does exactly the same as when we're working with a normal note. So the dot says half of this one. So this is worth one. The dot mm -hmm. is worth half. So the rest is worth one and a half beats. You okay with that? Yes. Same. Okay. Then this one over here, that funny little block is resting on top of the line. The one that rests on top of the line is worth two beats. Mm -hmm. Hanging down from the line, it's worth four. Okay, so the one that sits on top of the line is two. The one that hangs down from the line is four. Okay, this one over here, the one that looks like seven, you already know is half a beat. Here is another one with a dot. Okay, And the dot does exactly the same thing. So we know from above that this without the dot is worth two. And half of two is one. So two plus one is three. Three beats. And the double seven is a quarter of a beat. Are we all happy with that one? Do you want to ask any questions? Yes. No. no okay. The first page is fairly straightforward. That won't take you very long. And in fact, the test, it looks exactly the same as this. The questions are exactly the same. It's just that the note values and the rests are going to be different. Okay, so what you see here is what you're basically going to get. All right, then it says here, and this is again another question where there are two parts. Okay, so you have to answer both to get all of the marks. It says write the correct note of value and rest for the number of beats indicated below. So where it says here four beats, we must write a note that is worth four beats and a rest that is worth four beats. So two answers for each one. Okay, so for one beat, we, we spoke about uh, one beat notes at the bar, above. A one beat note is a crotchet, so that's what it looks like there. And the rest for a crotchet looks like the ZC. Simple. <laughs> then a quarter of a beat is a semiquaver and its rest is a double seven. Now this one, it was a bit difficult for me to actually get onto the computer because my, my computer doesn't do all of the double dot things. But three quarters of a beat is, um, sorry, this is not supposed to be a double. Sorry, there it is. Three quarters of a beat is a quaver, which is half, plus um, the dot, a quarter. Three quarters. Can you say that again? Like I'm asking based on the way it's going to have double dots. It's going to with how many dots? You think it's going to have double dots? If we had a double dot here, which I had originally, we would have had the quaver is worth a half. So there's, oh, sorry, let's get the right. Here. Just got to get the right font, sorry. So a half is the quaver plus a quarter is the dot. And if we had a double dotted one, we would have said plus a half of the quarter and a half of a quarter is an eighth. So that would have been um, four eighths, five, six. It would have been seven eighths of a beat if it was a double dotted one. Okay, do you see how, uh, what I would have had to do for this is a half is worth four eighths. 
but let me just make this a bit smaller so you can see it all. A half is worth four eighths. A quarter is worth two eighths. And one eighth is one eighth. So I say four plus two is six plus one is seven is equal to seven eighths. But that's if it was a double dotted one, okay? Okay, so thanks. Then over here, two beats. That's a simple one, a minimum and a minimum rest. And three beats, that's also quite a simple one because you know that, a dotted minimum and a dotted minimum rest. I would receive one mark for that and one mark for that. So 10 marks all together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Any questions about that? No, no, sir. All right. No. Now here's the one where I think some of you may struggle a little bit. So we're going to work on these one by one. We're working with time signatures here and it says insert bar lines in the correct places in the following five examples. Remember to add the final bar line at the end. So what you can do right from the beginning is put a bar line at the end of each example. Okay, then you won't forget. So put the, the one at the end straight away. All right, then you're already sorted with that, with that part of the question. Now let's look at A. What does 4-4 four, four mean? Who can tell me what 4-4 four, four means? It means four. Four beats in a bar. Four crotchet beats. In a bar. Okay, that means we're dealing with one count notes, crotchets, and there are four of them in the bar. Okay, so there are four crotchets in the bar, four one count notes. How much must each bar be worth if we calculated them uh, all together? Four. Yes, okay. So let's have a look at this one. This note over here, how much is that worth? One. One. And this rest? One. Yes, and this one? Two. two. So one plus two, one. two plus two is four. four. So we need to put the bar line over there. This one four. Yeah. Okay, then this note here, how much is the dotted minimum worth? Dotted minimum. That's three. 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 Yes. And the ZC rest is worth one. 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 So three plus one is four. And we put the bar line. Okay, then a quaver is worth a half. And another quaver is worth one. So we've got yeah. two quavers is worth one. Two quavers is worth another one. One plus one is two. How much is this rest? Two. So one plus one is two plus two is four. So we put And then this note over here is worth four. So we put the bar line. Okay. Now, our best option now is actually to take some of the bar lines out of here and you tell me where to put them. Okay. One of these is designed so that you can tell me where. So I'm just going to take these all out. It's going to take us to each of these, uh, these examples, okay? To explain how it works. Okay. Put those all on mute for the moment. All right, Bongani, you are going to be 
Tamia, you're going to do C. Nele Siwe, can you do B? And Taylor Pilo, can you do No case, no case. I'm going to give you two minutes just to work those out in your mind so that you can explain to us where to put the bar line. So let's put the bar line if you're struggling, okay? Two minutes to work out the Start with Bongani, okay? Okay. You said you said I'm doing E, right? Uh, B. B O oh, B. Okay. The second one. I'm ready. Okay, are you ready, Bongani? Yes, sir. All right, you coach us to number B here. Tell us what each of these is worth and then where I must put the bar lines. Um, okay. Um, there are three bits um, in, 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 in the bar um, as we led by our time signature. We're going to count, um, starting with our uh, quiver. Oh, okay. starting, starting with our quivers, okay? uh, we have two beam to quivers. Those give us uh, half plus half is equal to one. Correct. Plus, um, plus a crochet. Correct. Of which is one bit is equal to three. Mm -hmm. That means we put um, the bar line there. Over here? Yes. Are you sure? Oh, sorry, wait. wait sorry. Remember that this oh, one. No. Wait, 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 wait. It's half plus half is equal to one plus one. Plus half plus half is equal to three. Yes. So the bar yes. Then we put the bar in there. there. Yes, we put the bar in there. Yes. Correct. Correct. Good. Then we continue. A crochet is equal to one. Uh, quaver plus quaver at half is equal to one. Plus a quaver is equal to three. Uh, plus a, um, a crochet is equal to three. Yes. So we put, we put the bar in there. Yes. Correct. Then we have we have a minimum there plus a crochet a minimum of uh, which is equal to uh, two bits plus uh, plus a crochet a crochet dress there of which give us um, uh, one uh, one bit. Then it's equal to three. We put a pile in there. Correct. Um, then we have a crochet. We have a crochet here uh, and um, a minimum rest. They give us tribute today. Correct. And then you see that the bar line at the end is correct. Yes. Thank you, Bongani. You've got that. Well done. Yes, thank you. Okay. Good. Now, Tamia, can you do number C for us, please? Okay, so C is uh, two crochet beats in a bar. Correct. Uh, the first bar line would go uh, after the third quaver. 
because third the quaver, quaver is one, yes. two, the second quaver, yes, the second quaver, because, yes, the second quaver, sorry, of the, the crotchet. Because tell us why. Because the crotchet, which is half, yeah. plus uh, one, yes, with the, and uh, half again equals yes. two. Right. So this one is one, that's a half, that's a half, half equals half. two. Equals two. Yes. Right. Okay. So our first power line is done. Yes. The second, um, the crotch, the crotchet, no, no, the quaver plus the quaver, which is half, quaver plus the quaver, which is half. Mm -hmm. Um, that makes one. And then there's a semi yes. quaver plus mm -hmm. the semi quaver. Which all add up to two. So the second bar line would come after the quaver, the quaver, and the semi quaver. This one here? No, the second one. The second one. Good. Okay. Yes. So let's just go through this again. This one is worth a half. Half. This one is a quarter. Yes. That one is a quarter. A quarter. So this yes. whole group here is worth one. One. Yes. Yes. And that whole yes. group is exactly the same, so it's worth one. Yes. Which is Good. one plus one, and then that equals two. Great. Okay. And this note here? Um, that note, which is the dotted crotchet, that equals one and a half. Correct. And the rest which is the quaver rest is, is, is also half. Correct. So we're all equal. The ball line. The ball line will come after the rest. Correct. The right. There you go. And, and this well, the minimum. Yes. The minimum equals two feet as well. Yes. All right. So that finishes our final bar. All right. Well done. Yes. Thank you. Nelly Seaway. Yes, sir. Okay, let's go through this one here. How many beats are there in the bar? There are four beats in the bar. Are you sure? What is that Three number? beats in the bar, sorry. Three beats in a bar, correct, yes. Okay. Yes. How much is this so one here? the first with? one, one. Yes. And the and the rest it's one over two. Yes, a half. Yes. And those two. And the other two. It's one. What is the okay? Just let's go through this one because this is a bit tricky, and and for all of you, this will be a bit trickier. This whole example is a bit more difficult. What are these two notes over here? Are they quavers or semi-quavers? These ones. Those are semi-quavers. They are semi-quavers, correct. Okay. And how much is one semi-quaver worth? One thing, one over four. Yes, quarter. Yes, correct. But we've got two semi-quavers here, right? Yes. So a quarter plus a quarter. How much is a quarter plus a quarter together? It's a quarter or half. A half, yes. So this one here, as you correctly said, Nele Siwe, is worth one. Sorry, let me just write a different... A different uh, that's worth one. This one is one over two or half. Okay, this one is yes. a quarter, and the second one is also, sorry, this is not good. So these, that one is a quarter, that one is also a quarter. Okay, so it's one plus a half, it's one and a half, plus a quarter is one and three quarters, plus another quarter is Two. So, so far up to there, we're worth two. OK? 
Okay. What are these two notes here, Nelly Siwe? Are they quavers or crotchets? Crotchets. Are you sure? A quavers. They quavers. are quavers, yes. And how much is a quaver worth? Who wants to help us? How much is a quaver worth? Oh. Uh -huh. Aha. Yes. Okay. Now I've found in the past that some people, when they see notes that are linked like this, they get a little bit confused. When you see notes that are just one line, that means we're dealing with quavers. You see notes linked by two lines, we're dealing with semicolons. Okay. Crotchets won't have a line uh, linking them. Okay, so only quavers or semi-quavers. Quavers have one line, semi-quavers have two. So altogether here, we've got one for the crotchet, half for that, a quarter plus a quarter, and a half plus a half. So all of that together is worth three. Okay, so we need to put the bar line there. Does everybody agree with me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, let's see where I'm going to help you with the next one because it's quite hard. All right. And all of you can help us together. What is this first note over here? That's it. Dotted? Is it a dotted crotchet or is it a dotted quaver? It's a dotted quaver because it's got this linking, one linking line means that it must be a quaver and the dot tells us that it's a dotted quaver. Remember what a dotted quaver is worth. Three over four. Three over four, yes. It's a half plus a quarter. So three over four. Are you happy with how I've done that? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, if we look at this note here on its own, how many lines have we got here? One? Two. Two. Yes, so what kind of note is that? Semiquaver. A semiquaver. Yeah. So it's a... All right. Do you see that? Three quarters plus one quarter is equal to one. One. So this whole group here, one. Are you all with me? Yes. yes, sir. How much is this rest here? Let me see where, how much is that rest worth? One. Yes, correct. And now do you see that this group over here is exactly the same as that? Yeah? So oh, it's again yes. quarters plus one quarter. So this is one, two, three. All together, we must put them. Okay. Now, how much is this rest over here worth? Let us see where. Two. two, correct. Okay, let's put a two underneath here. And this note over here, what kind of note is this one? Has it got two lines or just one? one. Okay. Remember, one line is a quaver. A semiquaver. So this is a quaver. And a quaver is a half. You with me? Good. And the other one is also a half. Okay, so we've got a half plus a half is one. Plus two, three, 
So I must put the bar line there. And this last line, can you tell me how to this last note? What is that worth? Anybody want to help us? It's a total minimum. Yes, and how much is it worth? Three. Three. So when the note is worth three, we don't need to, we just put the bar line right at the end there because it's filling up the whole bar. Do you all, are you all happy with how I've worked that out? Yes. My advice to you is that you actually write the values of the notes underneath there like that, okay? A number of people do is when they see this one, they say that the first note is worth one and a half. That's a dotted crotchet, okay? And so that makes it very much out of, of proportion. Remember that the one line, linking line like this means that it's a quaver. And that the two lines over here mean that the second note is semi-quaver. Okay. Right, now, Elen Pilo, can you do the last one for us, please? Okay, see. So, uh, four, four means that you must have in four beats per bar, which you're gonna use in crochets. And then the first one, it's a dotted thing in which we have three. Yes. And then the, uh, the second one is a, it's a crochet, which you will wear the one, which you're gonna put the bar in after it. Yes, correct. Yeah, and then you're gonna have in, uh, crochet which we the one and then the crochet uh, rest which we the one and then the minimum which we the two we're going to put in a bar end of things after the minimum. Correct. Yeah. And then we're going to have a dotted minimum rest which we the three mm -hmm. and then the crochet which we the one we're going to put a bar end of things in. Yes, because that is three plus one. Cool. Okay. Yes, sir. And Good. then we have in the, the quavers which are tied together, which means they worth one and another one worth one. And then we have in a, a mini which worth two and then made four. All right. All right. So when you are working these out, just do it slowly and carefully. Make sure that you've got all the correct note values. If you make a mistake with one of the note values, you see that it will throw the whole thing out. So make sure that all of your note values are correct. Okay. Any questions about this section that we've just done now? Um, I want to ask about the, the, the last bar line. If you didn't write the last bar line, that means the whole thing is wrong. No, it just means that you will have the bar because the, the, the last bar is incomplete. It has to have the bar line to be complete. Okay, thank you so very much. If you get that bar line out, you would get half plus a half plus a half, that you'd get one and a half for that. Okay. Yes, okay. Because for each of these, you're going to get two marks. You see, there are five questions here, and there are 10 marks. Half, 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 half. That gives you two. So you're going to get half a mark for each of the correct bar lines. Yes. Now, this next one, a lot of people struggle with this one says there are 10 examples below, each one bar long. However, each bar is incomplete. Add the correct rest or rests, so it could be one rest or two, to each example so that each bar is complete. And it gives you an example here. Here's three, four. How many beats do we need to have? How many crotchet beats do we need to have to, uh, for each of these bars in three, four? Three, yes. And how much is this one worth? One. One. And this one? One. One. So one plus one is equal to two. If we say then 
we need three, but we've got two. So three minus two is equal to one. So we need to fill in one rest over here or a one beat rest. And so there is the one beat rest. Okay, so you see how this works? Yes. Kind of like working backwards. All right, so let's have a look at this first one over here. It says three, four. All right, three, four tells us we're working with three crotchet beats, one count beats in a bar. So a whole bar must be worth three. What one over here, this is worth one. So three minus one is equal to two. Now you could have two options here. You could write out two crotchet rests like over there or a minimum minim rest. For the moment, I would prefer that you, that you give a rest for each uh, beat, okay? So because there are three beats in this bar, I've given one for the second beat and one for the third beat. You wouldn't be incorrect if you'd written a minimum rest but for the moment, and you'll see this later on why I insist on this, it will help you in your mind to work out how to uh, group the risk correctly. Okay, but you only will come up with this a little bit later in the semester. So for the moment, just put a, a rest for each complete beat. Okay? Okay. All right. Now, 2 4. What does 2 4 tell us? Two minutes in a row. beats per bar. So each bar must be worth two. two. What notes have we got here? Semiquavers. Semiquavers, semi yes. Okay. How much is worth? Uh, how much is one semiquaver worth? It's called one semiquaver. Yeah. 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 A quarter. Correct. Yes. So a quarter plus a quarter. And what does a quarter plus a quarter equal? Half. A half. So, so far we've got a half, but we need two. So what is minus a half? It's one and a half. One and a half, yes. And here is where the trick comes, okay? Uh, you could write a one and a half beat rest like that. Can you see this? That is a Z yeah. rest plus a dot. That is worth one and a half, okay? <clears throat> but do you see how I have first completed one whole beat? Half, I mean, a quarter plus a quarter is equal to a half. And a half rest makes one. And then, you see how I've done that? This side is equal to one, and that side is equal to one. Okay? If you look at this one over here, it's the same thing. Three, four means we've got three beats in the bar. Correct? How much is that note worth? One and, a half. One and a half. So let's first finish off that half so that it makes it a whole. We put a half rest. Now it's worth two altogether. Okay. And then we add the next rest over there. One. But we first complete the incomplete beat. And then we give a complete beat over there. Okay. I suppose you could also have put that rest over there. Okay, But you'll see later on why I don't want you to use dotted rests in this type of answer. It will become more, um, uh, more apparent to you a little bit later on. Okay, But for the moment, uh, just try to complete each individual beat. Okay, So this beat was only worth a half. So we have to finish that beat to make it worth one. Mm. When we finish that beat, then we can complete the rest of the beat. Okay. Yes. 
Okay. This one was worth one and a half. So we have to complete it to get to two. It's complete now, and then we can finish off the next beat. Okay. Right, now let's go back to C. Four, four. Four, four, what does four, four mean? Four beats in a row. Correct, okay. How much is a dot, a double dotted minimum worth? Three and a half. Three and a half. Good. So what do we still need to finish it? Just a half. three and a half plus a half is equal to four. Four. Right, here's one of those interesting notes here, okay? Sorry, let me take that away. The first <coughs> note is what kind of note are we dealing with here? This first note here. Okay, I'm sorry, I just need to take this. This is my son's school. I'll be with you in a minute. Hello? Hello. All right, and you. Hmm. Okay. I'll try and get there soon. I'm just teaching a class at the moment, but I'll be finished in about 15 or 20 minutes. Okay, thank you. Bye. Sorry, that was my son's school. I need to go and fetch him just now, but I, I want to finish with you first. Okay, so this note over here, it is a quaver, a dotted, dotted quaver. quaver. Remember, it's a quaver just because it's got one line. And this note over the second note, what is this one over here worth? A quarter. A quarter. So this one is worth quarters. This one is worth a quarter. The whole thing together is worth one. We're in two for time. So two months equal to one. We need a one pound rule. Okay. Sir. Are we all happy with that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. This next one, note names, is quite simple. All right. The only difficult part about these note names here is are the ones that are on ledger lines. So I want to start sharing this for a minute, and I just want to revise very briefly ledger lines. I'm going to share you uh, with you another uh, picture. Tell me when you can see the picture. Can you all see? Yes. Sir. All right. So over here we have a treble cliff. Who can remind me what the lines of the treble cliff are? What notes are they from the bottom? C, G, C, G, G. F. F, correct. Every good boy deserves food. And the, the spaces are F, A, D, E. Now, when we're dealing with ledger lines, we are simply extending the stave upwards or downwards. Do you see here? These lines here are basically making these lines just carry on. Okay, and you'll remember if you were with us in the class last week, this is like the little diagram that I uh, drew for you there. The spaces are in between here. The blue ones indicate the spaces and the red ones indicate the lines. Okay, so if this is the top line, F, remember every good boy deserves food. So the top line is F, the top Space over here is G. The next line is A, then C, then C, D, E, F, G. So I always like to just draw that little thing at the beginning so that I'm 
clear about what the ledger lines are. The same thing works over here, okay? This is the base cliff. Uh, who can remember what the lines in the base cliff are? This is G. G, good, boys, deserve, food, always. always. All right, so this bottom line here is G. Here, the space is F, the line is E, D, C, B, A, G, F. It just keeps on going back down. All right, now let's go back to your test. I'm actually not going to go through each of these because you can work these out on your own given that system. Okay. Are you all happy with that little system that I just showed you now? Yes. Okay. In your test, in your real test, there are going to be 24 notes. Okay. Here we've only got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There will be 24 notes. So it's going to take you a little bit longer. Okay. okay. Did all of you get these ones correct? When you tried? Yes. Yeah. Good. Right, here's the one that's a little bit more difficult. And in this one, I couldn't uh, draw the answers on here because my computer wouldn't do the ledger lines for some reason. So I, I will explain to you how they work. So you have to draw the, the note according to what is given to you. It says in the treble clef. So the first thing is you draw a treble clef. Okay. B on a line. So we know that we're working with line notes. Okay. And if we look at the treble clef like this, every good boy. So we know that the line, that the note must be on the third line. Okay. So you see, one, two, three, I put the note over there. It also tells us, if we go back into the question, it says that you must use semi-briefs, okay? So you must make sure that you are using semi-briefs. Right, then it says in the base cliff. So we write our base cliff over there. Now it says E, above the stave. That means that it mustn't be on the five lines or the four spaces of the stave. We're going to go above. Oh. I'm going to stop sharing here and show you that picture again so that you can see which one. Oh, it doesn't have it here. Okay. Oh. Let me just find uh, the picture that has it for you. Of ledger lines. Here we go. Sorry, I've just got to get this up for you. Share screen. Right. Can you see this picture over here? Yes. So here's the base cliff. We know that the the base cliff is good boys deserve food always. So the top line is A, it goes B, C, D, E. So E has got two ledger lines and it's on that second ledger line. Happy? Yes, sir. Good. The next uh, one is, In the treble cliff, so we draw a treble cliff straight away. There's the treble cliff, okay? C above the stave. So we know we're not working in the stave, but above it. So I'm going to share the screen with you again so you can see. Here's the treble cliff and we're going above the treble cliff. Every good Boy deserves food. There's the top line. G, A, B, C. So it's also got two ledger lines 
and it's on the second ledger line. All right, now let's go down to these last two. In the base cliff, there's the base cliff, A on the stave. So it needs to be on the stave. Good boys deserve food always. There's one of the A's. Do you know that there is another A on the stave? Do you know which one it is? The safe one. One in the space, yes, right at the bottom. Remember the, the spaces are all cows eat grass. If you'd done the one in the space, that also would have been correct. Okay, then in the treble cliff. So there's the treble cliff. A below the stave. And there I've put the A below the stave. You just have to count backwards from the lowest line. The lowest line is E, the space is D, the first letter line is C, then that space over there is B, and then the second line is A. Okay. Now, here we are at this question about tones and semitones. And now I'm gonna show it to you with that keyboard. So it says, for each note below, write another note, which is a semitone lower. So we're going down. And we're also working with semitones. With semitones, is it one step or two steps? One. one step, correct. Okay, so let's go and look at each of them. Yeah, the first note is a G. So let's go to the keyboard. Here's the keyboard. And here is a G. We're going one step down, a semitone down. So we step one down. What note do we have here? G flat, G flat or F sharp. All right, so we can go back up here. And we can write either of those. Remember with a semitone, it doesn't matter which one you're doing. I just chose F sharp here. But you could have also written G flat. Okay. Yes. This one. What note is that? It is a crotchet, yes, but what is the letter name? Oh, E. It's an E, yes. Okay. So we go down to the piano keyboard. Here is an E. We need to go one step down. So our next step down is to this black note. So we've got either E flat or D sharp. We can choose which one because we're working with semitones. So we go up here and you'll see that I chose E flat, but you could also write D sharp. It would be correct as well. Me on that? What is this note over here? This one is F. It's F. F what? Flat. Are you sure? F sharp. F sharp. Oh. Correct. Okay, so we go down here. There's F sharp. Okay. And we have to go down one step. There it is. And there's only one option. It has to be F natural. So we go up here. And look what I have to do. I have to write the natural sign in. Why? Because that F sharp over there is going to affect this whole bar. So if we just wrote an F over here, it would also be an F sharp. So we have to write the natural sign in front of it. Now I'm not gonna do these two ones over here unless you want me to, because they work in exactly the same way. Do you understand, are you happy with what I, the way that I've done that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. All right.
right, now let's have a look at this one because this one here is about a tone. <laughs> tone, one step or two. One step or two steps? Two steps, then. Two steps. Two steps. And it's up. Higher means up. All right. So let's have a look. The first note, what is this over here that I'm highlighting? It's in the bass cliff. It's a minute. Oh, sorry. It's a B. It's a B. It's a B. Okay. Good. Good voice. So here's the B. And a tone is two steps. So we go up one step, we get two steps. And we go up another step, we get to this note over here. You see that I've written here C sharp. This note is called C sharp or D flat. But I have to go from B to one step up C. So it must be a C sharp. Okay, then what is this note over here? On the keyboard, I take one step up, two steps, and on A. Right. Okay. okay. Good. What is the note over here? It's A. A, yes. But it's A sharp. All right. A sharp. Yes, sir. So we find A sharp, A sharp. And we have to go up two notes. One. Two. Now we have a little bit of a problem because it says C, doesn't it? But our first note is an A. And remember, the rule is working with tone, you have to go to the next letter. What is the next letter name of A? Okay. okay, but this is not a B. So we have to use harmonic equivalent. So we have to find the other note for this note. So here's B. This must be, it's one step up from B. So this can also be B sharp. C is the same as B sharp. Yes, sir. Okay, so look, I've written it there. I didn't hear you. You didn't hear me. There's B. Okay. If we, if you remember, if you're looking at A and you go up a step, it's A sharp, isn't it? Okay, so if we go B and we go up a step, note B sharp. So, so C is the same as B sharp, so we can just write it as B sharp. Okay. Do you understand that? Yes, we do. Okay. Now these these last two here are the same. Okay, they work in the same way, so I'm not going to go. Want me to? You want me to go through those? If you do, I can go through them. Okay. Otherwise, we can uh, take the final questions. No, I'm fine. Delisiwe, are you okay? Yes, I'm fine. Bongani is fine. Tamia, are you all right? I'm okay, sir. And Thelen Pilo, are you okay?
Okay, I can't hear him, so I'm not sure. Now, are there any final questions that you want to ask about the test on Monday? Let me just explain to you how it will work. 10 o'clock in the morning, I am going to send the assessment PDF on WhatsApp. So at 10 o'clock, you will receive it or just before 10 o'clock, okay? You'll receive it as a PDF. If you can't read a PDF, I will also send screenshots of it for you so that you can still see the questions, even if you don't have a PDF writer. Then you will have two hours to complete that uh, assessment. And it's in exactly the same format as what you've just seen now, okay? When those two hours, you take pictures of your answers and you watch them, WhatsApp them to me, and then I will mark it. Okay, so if you aren't finished after the two hours, you still take the pictures of what you've been able to finish, okay? Yes, all right, are we all okay with that? Yes. Yes. Good. All right. Are there any final questions before I finish for today?